everyone, this is Lindsay with HowDoI5.com. Today we're going to answer the question, how do I use Microsoft Excel? Now this is going to be the first installment in a crash course series on Microsoft Excel. Today we're going to cover the basics and I'm going to show you basically how Microsoft Excel works and what you can do with it. When you open the program, you're going to see something similar to this. It's basically a giant white grid. Um, and what you're looking at is a series of cells. Now your cells are always identified by columns and rows. Across the top you'll see some letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. These are your columns. Across the side you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. These are your rows. At any given time you are within a cell that's assigned to a column in a row. So you see here we've clicked and the D has been highlighted to tell us, hey, you're in column D and the row has been highlighted, you're in row 4. This is a really great feature within Microsoft Excel because sometimes you know you may have a ton of information and I can get all the way out here and you know I can't follow this with my eye. You know, I'm pretty good at estimating <laughs> things by eye, but this would be a little bit tricky to tell what column and what row I'm in and it does it for you. Microsoft Excel will help you with that and it will highlight now I'm in column N in row 23. This is really important. Being in the right cell or the right column and row is really important when you call for data later on. Microsoft Excel works really well with other Microsoft Office products. So you can do things like create a table with customer contact information in it and you can go into Microsoft Word and create mailing labels from the data that's found in this Microsoft Excel sheet. So Word may not be the best thing to try to create tables in. It's a, it's a little bit tough, but this is a great 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 program to do that in and just import that data automatically into Microsoft Word and we'll show you how to do that in another tutorial. First let's rename these sheets. You'll see that the Microsoft workbook is made up of multiple sheets and what you can think of is let's think about a topic that is sort of an overarching topic for information. Customer management. For this example let's say customer management Within customer management, you might have customer, customer contact information. You might have information on customer purchases. And you might want to take all of that information to analyze sales trends or something like that. All of that really still falls under the realm of customer management. And because that, you can put all of this within one workbook, just separate it into multiple worksheets so that that information can stand on its own, but it can also be combined with other information to give you more data that will help you maybe make decisions about your business. The first thing that we're going to do, rename the sheets to help keep you organized. To rename a sheet, just right click and rename. We're going to call this first one customer contact info. Let's do the same for the second one. Again, just right click and rename. And we're going to call this customer purchases. Finally, this third one, let's use this for sales trends. Now for this first tutorial, we're only going to go through the customer contact info and I'm going to show you how to start to create a table of customer contact info that we can use later on for a lot of different things. We can use for mailing labels, we can use it to um, create uh, you know, email campaigns, things like that. But let's just get started by creating our basic headings that we're going to need to organize our customer contact info. So think about you know, what you need to have a real database of customer information. You're going to need names, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start in the upper left-hand cell, which is A1, and we're going to title this first name. Then we're going to do last name in the next cell over. Let's do phone, phone, email, city, state. Now one thing that you'll notice is that in the first cell it looks like first name is a little bit cut off. And this is because there's a default width within Microsoft Excel. This can be changed very easily by hovering in between the columns and just clicking and dragging. And we're just going to widen these columns a little bit so that our information doesn't get cut off from view. Odds are it's you know always there, it's just that the default width may be cutting it off from view. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just put in some sample information. So let's just start by entering in Jane Doe. 
And at any given time, to move from one cell to another, you can either hit tab or you can use your right or left arrows to toggle in between cells, or you can just use your mouse and click to a particular cell. I like to use my arrows and use the tab. It helps me move through the worksheet very quickly. Let's add in John Doe. And finally, we'll do one more person. Let's add Mary Jones. And there you go. So now we have the beginning of a database, really, of customer contact information. To help keep this sort of visually appealing and separate the headings from the data beneath it, you can start to stylize your sheet to make it easily readable to you. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, these headings a little bit larger and I'm going to make them nice and bold so that I can see that everything under this column is supposed to be the first name. Everything under here is supposed to be the last name. To do this, I'm going to highlight this entire row. To highlight the entire row, I'm just going to click on the number one. And every single cell within row one is going to be highlighted. And now I'm going to choose properties for those cells. Basically, I'm going to just use the text tools. I'm going to make everything bold. And then I'm going to make everything italicized. And when I click away, I see that everything that was in this row one has now gained those properties. And you know, just like any other Microsoft Office product, if you don't know what the tools do, Basically, just hover over the symbols, hover over the icons, and a little info box usually pops up. The symbols will be similar to, let's say, Microsoft Word or Works. Everything is, is consistent and, and like that for a reason, so that it helps you move easily through the different products in the suite. So if you see a tool that you've seen someplace else, odds are it does the same exact thing. So the, finally, the last thing that I'm going to show you how to do, we're going to, we're going to highlight this entire row one more time. And again, we're just going to click on the number one. I'm going to increase the font size just a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how to use the borders. Now, right next to this underline tool, you're going to see another little tool that looks like dashed grid. And click the drop down arrow. You'll see a few options for borders. Now, again, any border option that you choose is going to be applied to the entire row. So I can do a bottom border, a top border, left border, right border. This helps to just keep your data visually organized. It really doesn't make any difference when you go to maybe create charts or do formulas and things like that. Borders don't matter. It's really just for your eye and what helps you be able to distinguish uh, rows of information and columns of information. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the bottom border. Let's take a look and see how that looks. There you'll see you have this long, nice, thin border that's running all the way along the bottom. And so here you have it. This is the beginning of a nice data base or table that you can use for a lot of different things. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is your options to save. When you click on the option, you can do Save As. And you can save as uh, you know, a 2007-2003 version, which is usually recommended. Not everyone has the newest version of Microsoft Excel. And if you're sharing files, it's always a good idea to downsave them. The other option is you can export this to PDF. You can do an open document. Or you can even print or prepare it to um, go to email or to be edited by someone else. You can send it to somebody else in an email or as a PDF attachment. There are a lot of options here that are new in the last few years within Microsoft Office that allows you to save this information wherever you'd like. So that's always the last thing. Just save your information. Save it frequently. And join us for the next segment. I'm going to go into how to use formulas, how to format your information, whether it be percentages, uh, money, how to move decimal points, things like that. And then finally, we're going to start to combine some of the information to make some graphs later on in the series. So if you have any other questions about Microsoft Excel or the Microsoft Office Suite, send us a question at www.howdoi5.com.